Hi, this is Steve Morse, and you're watching Hot Guitars. <laughs> Video man, I can't even talk. All right, take two. Hi, this is Steve Morse. You're watching Hot Guitars Video. Hi, this is Steve Morse, and you're watching Hot Guitars Video Magazine. Of course, you know that already. I asked him, does that mean everybody that's in the magazine that's getting video is, is hot? He says, no, no, we do guys like you do. All right, so <laughs> it's cool, though. I play the style of music I do, whatever style it is. Not to try to be, you know, a rebel or try to be this or that. It just, it just is what makes me happy. And the reason I can do it for a living is because of repeat business. You know, over the years, all the people that have come to our shows come back and a lot of them bring a friend, you know, and, and because of that, I can do it for a living. And so there's, there's very rarely a time when I wake up in the morning and, and get something to eat that I don't think about that. I always, for some reason, I just associate it with breakfast. Whenever I start my day and start eating, I think, wow, those people out there bought me this food, really. They paid for it. You know, and I got to remember that, that uh, uh, they're taking care of me, you know, and I got to take care of them you know, when, I go, when I get on stage. My grandmother had told me she had a guitar in her basement, so they gave it to me after much pleading. Finally, I I mowed a few lawns and saved up my dollar fifty to go to these group lessons they had at da the downtown music store. So there's 12 people sitting around, you know, it was one of these, you two can play guitar. And for the first lesson, all the guy did was tune everybody's guitar. <laughs> that was it. So uh, he got to my guitar and he said, forget it. And he called the owner of the store over and to pick out a guitar for me to rent. I said, wait a minute. I got a guitar. And he said, no, you can't play this. I said, I know, that's why I'm here. He said, no, you can't play this. And I said, wait a minute, how come? I said, look, and it turns out the neck was, you know, like this, and the body was cracked. I knew it was cracked, but it was still in the shape of a guitar. What's the big deal? And the bridge was pulling up. It was acoustic. And the strings were about an inch away from the frets. And that, you know, that would just be too, it, was, it couldn't be done. So anyway, that guitar hit the trash, and I started renting an acoustic guitar for about a year, you know, just to learn, or more accurately. That sounded bad, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you. 
I first met Steve Morse and Andy West and Alan Sloan uh, when we were college students at the University of Miami. And um, I met Steve in an improvisation class. I was playing piano in the class. So he didn't know that I was a drummer at the time. He thought I was this piano player. And when he found out that I was a drummer, he invited me to come to a jam that his band was having one evening somewhere. And I knew that I was in for a treat going there because in this improvisational class were all these guitarists and they all looked like they were the same person. They all had short hair. They all had fat guitars that had no treble on them and had all bass tone. And everything that they played were these, and they were all great players, but they were these stock licks that you learn when you're in school, like and then off in the corner was Steve Morse, long, straight, blonde hair, jeans. He wasn't wearing shoes. Solid body Fender guitar, you know, with four pickups or whatever, with the most awesome rock tone. And he just stuck out from the pack. You know, we were in this jazz program, but here obviously was a person filled with imagination and his own unique sound in every way. Still in college, just about to get out of music school down in Miami, I recorded the band for two nights in a little auditorium. That was called The Great Spectacular. That was our demo. That's what we got our record deal with eventually. The reason we got the record deal was because we had something happening on a regional level. We had people coming to concerts and eventually some people that knew somebody in the record company came to the concerts and that's how we got the record contract. Not just because we had an album that we could uh, point to and say, here we got an album. The every record company rejected the album. I had it shrink wrapped, and they would send it back with a shrink wrap still on it, with a letter saying that they didn't think it was right for them. And I, I had a hard time figuring out how the, you know how they could listen to it and then still cover it back up and send it back. We decided that rather than uh, you know let it devastate us, let's let's let the rejection make us stronger. And the more that people told us, you are never going to make it without a singer and without normal sounding music, we took that and said, oh yeah, we are going to make it. You just watch. We're going to get a record deal. We're going to make records and, and our audience is going to grow and grow and grow and we're going to bring our music to the people. Dregs, T. Lavitz was a keyboard player for the last, I don't know, five years of the Dregs. Anyway, T. Lavitz, after we broke up, he did an album with Dave LaRue, the bass player. And he, T. told me, hey, this guy's really good, you gotta keep an eye out for him. I remember Dave LaRue, I tried him out. Uh, I think I was doing some gigs with Kansas during the time. And we just breezed in and I uh, played a couple tunes. He said, I, you mind if I bring a drummer along? I said, not at all. And it was Van, the drummer. And he knew the, these three or four songs. Anyway, it seemed like we could have played a gig that night. <laughs> it felt like a band to me. It was not a hard decision. It was the easiest transition I've ever made. 
High Tension Wires was me working almost exclusively by myself in the studio late at night after coming home from work or whatever, because I had a weird job then. Um, and it spread over almost a year, the High Tension Wires did. And the latest album was more of the band coming together. I had ideas for everybody to do, you know, like here's an idea for a song, here's an idea. I had a, enough stuff there to work on, but we arranged it together. That is, you know, the guys were physically sitting here and I said, hey, let's, let's try this thing here. You play this and you play that and let's see how it works. And then we'd play it and then I said, what do you guys think? You know, what do you think we should change? And, and they'd give their input. And it was, it was intensely to get their personality involved. And some tunes were already planned out completely that I couldn't really change too much, like uh, Flat Baroque, the acoustic piece, you know, where it's, well, it's distorted, so. It's more unclassical. 